what you were just saying about you know how people after they're done needing the drugs they they still want to go back to them because they're addicted well it's you know the the argument of psychiatry is that a lot of these mental illnesses are hereditary or biological so they say well if you stop taking the drugs you're going to relapse so you should never yeah. stop taking the drugs according to them and oh you know and and this this links back to their arguments there's certain groups of people that are are more commonly diagnosed with mental illness and there are people called eugenicists who believe that some races are superior to others and they're using psychiatry to try to prove their point. To say, well, these all these people, you know, they have all these mental illnesses and they're poor. And so they're, yeah. they're inferior and we, and we have to support them with our tax money. So we should tr find a way to limit how many of them there are, you know. And they do, and they do that um, by slapping labels on them like... They have mental disorders or they're schizophrenic or because they have these mental disorders, you know, they do crime or all this crap. So they want, they come up with all these excuses and hollow statements to convince people to take these drugs or to see these drugs as a way out. But really these drugs are, a way down, a way to a place where it'll take you to a place where you never wanted to be in the first place, probably in a worse place uh, that you were in before you took the medication. And they really pick on vulnerable people to have these drugs being used on them because what is a vulnerable? A vulnerable person going to do what well, they don't have any any choices or this it seems like they don't have any choices so and that's basically what you're doing you're trying to enlighten people about this subject and how there's it's not the only choice to these pharmaceutical companies just want money and they don't care if they ruin minorities lives or people's lives it doesn't matter who whose lives it is as long as they can slap the label on you they'll give you the drugs and um then they use their quote-unquote expert power they say we're the expert not you you know you should do what we say and the court the yeah they they know you they know you more than you know yourself yeah that makes sense <laughs> But, but they're also using that the, they're saying that they're the, they know best and that they, they're, they're the expert yeah. and that's their argument. Now, this goes so deep that, well, who are the real experts in the eyes of society? People from Ivy League schools, right? Like Yale University. Right. Those Yale, are the experts. <laughs> Yale University started in 1701 before the American Revolution. And so it, it was always like this kind of imperialist institution. And they have secret societies that started before the Civil War that are still around there, such as Skull and Bones, Berzelius, Scroll and Key, yep. and Wolf's Heads. Berzelius was founded after a Swedish scientist named Jans Jakob Berzelius. He was the, one of the founding fathers of modern chemistry. Now, chemistry and pharmacology are what goes into making these pills. Okay, these pills are made by people that believe that they're superior, who go to these old <laughs> Ivy League schools. Yeah, they think their degrees and all all the time they spend in the schools, they think that makes them more insightful than someone who hasn't. Someone who's someone who couldn't have that opportunity to go to these schools. They those people that make the the pharmacists and the psychiatrists and um the people who design these pills with chemistry, of course they're going to feel superior and they're going to want to bring all the people that don't have the same opportunity they did. They want to bring them down because they, they don't want to be exposed for what they're actually doing. Is and um, you know, speaking of skull and bones, John Kerry, who ran against Bush at one point for president, he is the secretary of state. I believe he oversees 
most of the intelligence operations, including gang stalking, and he was a member of Skull and Bones, one of these secret societies that is part of the same tradition. For example, Berzelius, this is a quote from Wikipedia, Berzelius became a senior society in the tradition of Skull and Bones. So that's, you know, that chemist, chemistry based secret society is a brother society to Skull and Bones. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah, that's what you're and the Secretary of State belonged to Skull and Bones, and at one point he ran against uh, George Bush, who was also in Skull and Bones. It was two Skull and Bones members running together for president, you know, and running yeah, against. Yeah, that's each how they. That's how they helped each other out. Yeah, there there's secret societies behind the scenes here. They think they're you know at, at Ivy League schools you generally have two types of people: one, people who are pretty smart, and then two, you yeah. have people from rich families who, you know, their family knows the school, their alumni, you know, they went to school there before, and their children yeah. pretty much get a free ride into the school, you know. And those people have teamed up to plot against the rest of the country. And and what a lot of people don't realize, just because someone's smart doesn't mean they are they have high moral values, you know. Right, exactly, that's true. Someone can be the smartest person in the world but still be an asshole. And a lot of these people, they believe in using their quote unquote intellect to subjugate people, to put them beneath them, to tell them what to do. And they think, you know, yes. they think it is smart to use their network to trick people into doing what they want them to do. You know, and, and when I when I was reading books by this book by Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma, he's one of the most famous people from secret societies in probably the last 400 years. He, he said, you know, whether you're using underhanded or sneaky techniques, whether you're using quote unquote votes of brutal ignorance, which means tricking people to vote the way you want them to vote. You know, he says that these are all marks of, in, uh, you know, a wise man and that you should use these sort of techniques to subjugate people. This is what these people believe. And one of the, 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 you know, it's right there in the names, you know, one of them is Berzelius, named after, a, that's the last name of a, of a Swedish chemist. And another is Skull and Bones, Skull and Bones, killing people. And, <laughs> and, and Wolf's Head, right? Wolf's Head. It means like, you know, you, you have the head, you have the thought process of a wolf, of a predator. Another way to look at it is you are killing. Yeah, these, the killer. Yep. You're killing these people by getting in their head. You're making skull and bones by getting in their head using chemistry. Yeah, it all connects together. They're they they're killers. That's that's what they want to do. That's what the society is based around, right? It's the wolf's head. That's the wolf wants to eat. It wants to live. It wants to. It's got to kill stuff to live. And what better way than to align yourself with these other groups? Yeah, and um, then I talk about this one society, uh, it's called the Fabian Society. Their symbol is actually a wolf in sheep's clothes. See, th these people are pretty much Satanists and their Satanism comes from how the devil is described in the Bible. They are trying to be that. They're trying to be the greatest deceiver of all time. They're trying yeah, they're to- Sure. Yeah, it's that that's the religion, you know, and, and a lot of it is they, not, they don't necessarily believe that there's a devil, but they believe in the principles that the devil believed in, you know, to trick people, to, to yeah. kill people, to steal. And, and that's why in business, they call it you making a killing in business. You ever heard that saying? Yep. And it's funny because they... It's it's been going on ever since history started, right? The smarter people want to take advantage of a lot of people that don't, like I said, don't have the same opportunities that they might have had. And once that starts to happen, man, it's just tyranny from there. And and these drugs, they dumb us down. The side effects of these drugs, hair loss. You know, uh, yeah. changes in patterns of speech. They're trying to make you, you know, lose your hair, sound like a babbling idiot. You know, uh, you know, losing your train of thought. You know, these these are part of the long term and short term effects of these drugs. They're dumbing people down and then turning around and saying we're smarter than you, so we should have the right to rule over you. 
you know? And a lot of times... Precise. And that's what... And they, like you were saying, these the people, the chemists who put these p drugs together, they... They had the. They already had the intention of making sure that all these symptoms and all these long-term effects are present in the drugs, because, like you said, they want to uh, make all these people that they have on these pills. They want to make them all look and sound like they're crazy. And they don't know what they're talking about, and they want and they want the image to be like, look at these poor people. See. They need us. They need us big guys to guide them and show them how to live their lives, which isn't the case. It, it's, it's bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's the case. It's bullshit. You know what's crazy? Right now, my mom just knocked on my door, opened the door before I answered it, and handed me psych meds and a Arizona oh, green tea. Just because of what I'm talking, my voice isn't even raised that loud. She said, oh my goodness, he's talking crazy conspiracy stuff again. Because she can kind of hear me through the wall, through the door, you know, in the hallway. Right. So, you see how bad it is? It's like, I'm telling the truth. I'm perfectly calm. I'm logical. I'm articulate. But still, I must. there must be something wrong with me because I don't like the way things are. And that I more than just suspect foul play. And... That's exactly what it is, is foul play. And like like we were just talking about, um, they want to convince people, like maybe your mom or my mom, that whatever is wrong with your son or whatever is wrong with your friend or whoever, um, these pharmaceutical companies convince them that they are the solution to the problem of your loved one because they don't know any better they don't know any better your your, your parents um they what they hear from you they think um is crazy right they they continue to drug you with these uh however they drug you in the food right they think they're helping you but they're not <laughs> And maybe they don't understand that. They don't understand that because the the doctors are telling them they're doctors, right? They went to the school. It's bullshit. Yeah, all that. They're telling your parents, my parents, everyone else's parents that they know better. They know what's best for your loved one, and it's not the case. They want your money. They want your life, and they don't want anyone to call them out and when they do call them out it, it just goes back in circles man they just once you start calling them out they want to put you back in the hospital they want to give you more drugs they want to isolate you even further so that's the punchline man it's people have to understand what's going on with all this yeah, and it's such a, you know, in this, in this you know, one, one, one thing people say is that the golden rule, he with the gold makes the rules. And we, we've let all the villains have the gold, and they're making the rules. And, you know, I think the only answer really is to somehow take away their money from them, you know, shut them down. I, I don't trust the government with taking over the pharmaceutical industry either. It would just be, you know, the, the same people would be running things behind the scenes, you know. <laughs> same people. So some people make the argument that what if we, we, we put the experts in charge instead of the private sector? Well, that's not going to make a difference because of these secret societies at the Ivy League school indoctrinating these people with the ideology of, you know, who's most who's most fit to live. That's what eugenics is. The idea that some, right. some people are more fit to live than others and some people shouldn't reproduce. A lot of this gang violence and stuff you see is a result of these secret societies pushing it through the entertainment industry. You know, and I like a lot of mainstream rappers, but let's face it, you know, they're part of a bit greater conspiracy to indoctrinate the youth with violence and to make them man, think it's okay. Yeah, you you hit it right on the head, man. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge that um, because, you know, rappers, and it's not just rappers, but specifically with rappers, they have 
um, a strong platform right now because a lot of these rappers are black. And if, if someone says, um, look at what these rappers are, are saying, look at what, look at what they're influencing the kids to do. They're going to say, well, oh, they might pull the race card or they might say, why are you trying to um, censor this? Well, it's not about censoring. It's just about how the message you're, you're sending to the kids. Kids are going to listen to whatever they want either way. And that's what I never understood. People that have platforms to make music or make art or make videos, whatever. I don't understand why some though some of those people use their platform to turn people's brains into something it shouldn't with corrupt ideas, lifestyles that really don't get you anywhere or so my point is that what we whatever we take in, whether it's you know music, all that stuff, entertainment. When we, when we take that stuff in, it becomes a part of us and we learn from that stuff. And man, some of the stuff these rappers are saying and it really messes up some, some kids. Kids act like they're gangsters and they're not gangsters. They do what the gangsters do or they do whatever this rapper does or it's detrimental, really. And that's just one example. Rappers, that's just one example of how they use these platforms to make people stupid, make people not think about what they're doing or everything short term. Everything right now, it seems like people think about short term. What's going on right now? What can I do right now? And when people make these decisions in the short term, the long term is just really it could be a real mess yeah um it's it's all a concerted effort it's a collaboration of different right. different forces different institutions you know even eugenics is described as the self-direction of mankind and they show you a, a whole pretty much every science you can think of is part of eugenics you know psychology psychiatry um you know even uh uh, biology, just everything they, they, they add it all together and say, oh, and they try to prove their point. These people who go to these Ivy League schools, especially, it's not just them, but you know, especially them, yep. they, they're usually the leaders of their respective fields. They're the quote unquote scholars. And they, they have things on the internet called peer reviews research. It's where a bunch of people in Ivy League schools review what other people in Ivy League schools have said, who are probably in the same secret society or political group that they're in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that's supposed to be, you know, that that's the most valid source on the subject. And I have to dig through tons and tons of stuff to make my argument against these people. Because every once in a while, there's some of them who tell the truth. There's somebody who's a respected person who tells the truth, goes against the grain, and I can kind of cite them. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just, can you see why in some of my videos, I'm very angry because there's 65 million. No. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, the, it's just, it makes you angry how, how all of this is just happening and everyone's just letting it happen. It, it makes me angry. It's like, are we just going to let them bend us over and have fun? You know, is, are they, are we really going to let them do that to us and the answer is yes it's happening people are just rolling over and letting it happen and, and they're also scared because when you think about all these yeah. people it's like they, they they can use gangs on people they can use organized crime they can use military you know those kind of special forces they can have a special forces covert operation that you know like the one that supposedly took out osama bin laden they can send one of those for me you know they can have off-duty off police officers you know provoke me to violence and have cops come, they can come shoot me, have cops come plant a gun on me. You know, there's so many different ways, you know, they can covertly drug me, they can poison me, and they've done all these things to people in the past. These aren't just things I'm coming up with. These are things that they've no, done. Yeah. It, it's all been documented and uh, it's, it's documented in a different way. 
it's not documented like how how you're saying it's documented like oh this guy had a gun and the police shot him it's a police shootout police shooting right that's just one example of what happens in this country and people die all the time and it's not documented like how it should be it's just crim- they say criminals crazy people they once they once they kill you they spread out your information on so everyone can see what you're doing what you were doing before they killed you and they try and paint you some more with this label like you had it coming like you oh well maybe the police shot him but if you look at if you look at his life maybe it's better off that they did shoot him yeah. and that's how they try and paint you yeah. and anybody really all the people that have already died that's how that's how it's gone that's why some of my videos are angry too in the back of my mind i know that they're going to use my anger to say that this guy is a crazy guy who believes crazy things Dick. and and but at the same time I don't want that, you know, I'm, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to let that stop me from expressing myself. So then I'm even more angry because I know that they're going to try to use that. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it yeah, feeds into it. That's what I was saying earlier, man. Um, when you do, when you do all those things and you show your emotions, that's, it's the only way to fight this because if if people see your true feelings and how you really feel about the situation, um, that's what's, that's, what's important. And if they're going to discredit you, they're going to do it. But there's people out there that feel the same way. Don't have any way to connect with anybody about it because they're already isolated, assuming. And, the bottom line is what you're doing is having a way for people to hopefully see what all the anger and all the, you know, all your emotion, hopefully they see that it's true what you're, all the emotions behind everything you do, all the you know all the you know how in some videos you're yelling and stuff like that it's it's not because you're crazy it's because we both know you know that no one's listening no one can understand what's going on and of course they don't feel the same way they don't have that same emotion because they haven't really thought about it that much and I think everybody would be angry with the fact that these companies, these smart people in high places, they, they think they know what's best for everyone's life, which is not the case. They destroy lives, destroy communities, they destroy groups of people. And that's why, that's why I think, um, people need to see you and people need to see your message, whether they agree with how angry you get or not, people need to understand the perspective of someone that is going through all this and it's just an eye opening thing because you can live your whole life not knowing about the struggles of people who've been affected by all of this, all the drugs and, you know, the list, the list of bullshit that happens. Like there's all kinds of things that happen. Like, don't get me wrong. The world's full of bullshit and it's happening everywhere, but specifically about psychiatry, gang stalking, all this, no one will ever know. Oh, wow. You still there? Oh, yeah, it cut, yeah, you it cut you out for a second, that's why. But you're back. Yeah, I'm here. 
and, and then in the Constitution, it says, you know, freedom of religion, the right to pursue happiness, pursue your own happiness. Is These are the ideas that America was supposedly built on. But then mental disorders are, are based on how you feel, how you think. You know, if you feel too happy, you need a pill. If you think in a way they exactly. don't want you to think, you need a pill. And you can be, you can come off as normal as me or you or someone else like that. And, you know, and, and they can still say, we need to force medicate this person. To me, that's insane. It's like, how can you possibly... Yeah justify force medicating someone holding them down and sticking a needle in their butt in a psych ward you know with somebody who is rational enough to make their own decisions you know and and with these drugs i'm not even sure you should force medicate people who aren't rational enough to make their own decisions <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's i mean that that's just that would make it worse 10 times worse <laughs> And they, they actually have people signing consent forms for experimental medications in the psych ward. So people go in there worked up about whatever they're worked up about, you know, and then they're they're having they're they're rushing them through these forms. So sign here, sign here, so we can we can check you in already. You know, you they know what they say to me? They say, Are you hungry? Yeah, we just need you to sign these forms and then he'll check you real fast, then we'll give you something to eat. You see how they're holding things in your head. Yeah. <laughs> they they want you to go easy they want you to just they think they can just take you that that fast you know sign here your life's over yeah, and, and they, they want to test they want to test these medications out because they want to see if their new formula works even better and the, and the process is so ridiculous. People who work for the FDA, the administration that's supposed to regulate them, a lot of times they'll retire from the FDA and go to work for a pharmaceutical company that they used to supposedly regulate. So they know if they, they do them favors, if they do them favors and turn a blind eye to their bullshit, that they will have a job with them later that pays like 200000 a year or so. Yeah, it, it that's the case, and the cycle continues. And nothing ever changes, and things just get worse. It's like a, it's like a s snowball, you know, tumbling down in the mountains, just gonna accumulate and get bigger. <clears throat> and these people, you know, one thing I brought up the other in one of the videos I forgot is that when these people experiment with a drug and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, they don't necessarily throw it away. OK, sometimes they no. sometimes they pretend it does. And sometimes they use it on political dissonance. They say, hey, this drug doesn't make this person, you know, doesn't make this person's symptoms go away. It makes them worse. So if we covertly drug people with this drug, we can get them to the psych ward so they can take our other drug. Yeah. So that's exactly the point. They want to give you their first batch to see to see if whatever they created is what they wanted you know if it makes the right effects that they want and like you said it just it'll make everything much much worse and between that time who knows what this person could do you know maybe this person is having a bad time and then he's has these drugs now and these drugs you know they're you know what the symptoms are that suicidal thoughts, uh, depression, you know, homicidal thoughts. That's the kind of drugs people are getting that, that make they, they make you feel that way. And imagine people that already, already kind of feel that way without these drugs. It intensifies their feelings. So once they get, once those feelings are intensified, like you said, they're going to go back, get the newest drug and further destroy whatever's left. <laughs> or, or, you know, if they're put in the state of mind where you say they're a former soldier or they're a gang member or someone who sees themselves right. as a violent person already. OK, they're given this drug that makes them more violent and they're intoxicated. They don't feel like themselves, but they feel more violent and they're still in the mind state of somebody who sees themselves as a violent person. That is a dangerous combination. It's, it's very dangerous. And there's been so many incidents that happen because of that specific reason where people that are already on the edge and they get these drugs and they they jump off the edge, they go over the edge because 
that's what the drug is designed to do. And once once they made a statistic out of you, um, then they just keep pushing it. They keep pushing the drugs and more drugs and more drugs, which never fixes anything. It's not going to solve a thing with these people. It doesn't help <laughs> at all. It And they don't even think either. To, like These drugs not only affect the person that's taking them, but it also affects the family. Oh, yeah. And the community. Big time. Big time. And and when you when you, some people think oh the pharmaceutical company wouldn't do that these people already turn a blind eye to a half a million people dying every year in Western countries alone they spend tens of billions of dollars on marketing so it's already established that they're killers who play stupid about it and that they care about their image that's why they spend so much money on marketing they care about what you think you know that's already established that's the type of person they are that's their criminal profile already <laughs> they're mass murdering yep. serial serial they're serial killers they're mass murderer serial killers they target certain type vulnerable individuals usually that fit certain profile right. types and they mass murder them they are the biggest serial killers in history yeah it's it's a large scale operation affecting not only just the poor or the middle class, or the rich. It's dude. No, it's affecting everyone from all places, from all levels of income. People are getting just rear-ended with these drugs, and they don't even know it. Yeah, and, and these. But are... the big, the big problem is like the the thing that makes it extreme is the people that already you know have this imbalance in their lives and like we were talking about once these people like a soldier you know a soldier that's been through some stuff he if he gets the medication it it could help for a short while until the drugs start to really take its effects. And, and the bottom line is education. People need to be educated about what these companies and what these people are really doing. Because we can't let history be written like that. As a as human beings, as a community as of human beings, we shouldn't let the, we shouldn't let our history be like that because it's there's no reason for humans to allow. It's like you know how everybody is against the Holocaust. No one was in favor of the Holocaust, but there's a silent Holocaust that's happening right now, <laughs> and people don't aren't educated about it and they don't think of it as a real thing but the holocaust was a real thing and so is what's happening with people who are being drugged and overdosing on all these pharmaceuticals it's not like the holocaust they're not lining people up and gassing them and shooting them but it's still a large number of people dying and it's really unacceptable in we all know that history is going to repeat itself, but why can't history repeat good things more? Why can't history repeat more of the good things than always it coming back with the bullshit that we've already been through and we should have learned our lessons from all that. But regardless of all the stuff we've talked about, it all comes back to one thing. It's only ever been one thing, man. It's about money. Money circulates and funds all of this. All, anything, all the wars that's ever happened. It's all about greed. And so, what what can we do? How much can we take? And, and that's why you know there's a systematic decline in morality. People are trying to make people more materialistic because the more materialistic people become, the more the people with money 
are you seem like gods among people and it also justifies them it, it justifies helps them justify killing people because they say hey everyone else sees the same things sees it the way we do and they would do the same thing in our shoes so why shouldn't we kill them if we, you know because they've they've made them they, they've gotten the society to share their same philosophy and going back to what you said about world war ii hitler was a eugenicist and he got his ideas for you are you still there yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, it, it made you uh, your your image disappear again. Anyway, he, he got his ideas for eugenics 